Welcome to a class on Ethical Matters. I am your professor, Rachel Tan of the UP Journalism Department. Every day we make all sorts of decisions that lead to actions, and these human acts are the prime matter for ethics. Human acts are actions done with knowledge and consent. What makes an act human? It is an act that is rational, that is, making use of the human faculty of intellect and will. My cat may be very good at catching snakes, but it operates on instinct, something that we have in common, except that our instinct will tell us to run away from snakes. Human acts are not the same as acts of man, which are actions that do not require the intellect and will, such as breathing, sneezing, or having our heart beat. Let me share with you my favorite comic strip, Calvin and Hobbes. Here he explains the rationality of humans. What do you think of it? Our rational nature, therefore, leads us to seek knowledge before an act, that is, to be able to choose there must be a choice between one thing and another, and second, to choose to do an action willingly. Of course, this assumes that we are not forced, pressured, or influenced by fear from the outside. For example, when we are held up, we may give up our wallet to the thief, but we do so unwillingly. In general, however, the absence of knowledge and freedom of consent, whether it is in serious or grave matters, are rare, usually occurs because of extraordinary circumstances such as mental illness or hypnosis. Therefore, an act is subject to ethics if it has full knowledge and full consent. What does this mean? Full knowledge is the person knows clearly what he is doing and not in the state of sleep or semi-consciousness. The person is generally aware of the goodness or badness of his actions. Full consent means a person freely chooses to do the action and is not motivated by fear or some psychological factor. There are three basic types of human acts. The first is the directly voluntary act, an action that is willed and desired for themselves. A famous mountaineer was once asked, why do you climb mountains? And he simply said, because it is there. For class discussion, how does Calvin illustrate directly voluntary acts? in this comic. The second type is the indirectly voluntary act. The will intends some object necessarily connected with an immediate object. For example, you may want to exercise every day, but the real goal is to lose weight. Again, for class discussion, how does Calvin illustrate the indirectly voluntary act? The third type is the ethically indifferent act, actions that ordinarily do not involve moral decision making. For example, it does not have any ethical um, consideration whether you take noodles or chicken for lunch, unless you are allergic to chicken and may be endangering your life by eating it. For class discussion, how does this comic illustrate an ethically indifferent act? How do we know if our actions are ethical? Here are some criteria for ethical actions. 
the first is an act is said to be bad if it is deemed a crime or a fault in the law of the country. Of course, this presupposes, first of all, that it is a just law. And second, we have to consider that not everything is covered by law. For example, plagiarism is unethical. There is no law against it, but there are rules in the university. Second, an act is good or bad depending on what the majority believes. This includes the norms acceptable in society as well as the codes of ethics that each industry discusses and codifies among themselves. Third, the goodness or badness of an act is determined by one's conscience. Of course, this presupposes that one has formed one's conscience well according to the moral law. A deformed conscience is not a very good judge of an ethical action. Fourth, respect for human dignity determines the morality of an act. Obviously, anything that goes against basic human rights is unethical. But sometimes what is overlooked are actions of fairness, for example, fair wages for jobs done. Fifth, an act is said to be good or bad according to what God has pointed out in revealing himself. Sometimes um, when it is not in the code of ethics, one finds the answer in one's own religion, whether it is the Holy Bible or the Quran or the Torah or the Tao Te Ching. These criteria can serve as guides in judging whether an action is ethical or not. They need not be all present to be able to determine the answer. An atheist, for example, may not believe the Bible, but societal norms and the practice of the majority, as well as the advice of our seniors, can show the way.